Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. It is Local Chat, episode 74, for the 2nd of June, 2022. Joining me, as always, my trusty steed, it's Ian Gibson. Hey, guys. Sorry about no episode last week. I had my niece's birthday party, but it's okay. We're back. We've got two weeks of games and news to talk about. It's going to be fantastic. And also joining us is Kyle Bailey. Hi. He's here. Uh, we did, in <laughs> fact, have an episode last week, and the problem about last week's episode is Chris and I are old friends, so we just kind of talked the entire yeah. time. <laughs> it was good. I listened to it. I feel like, okay, you guys shit on me a lot during that episode, <laughs> but there's actually, there's only one thing that I feel the need to rebut, which is that I don't hate 1917. I think it was a good movie. <laughs> I just don't think it's a great representation of World War One. It's a little bit oh, too okay. tame compared you know to what? the truth. I will agree with that. It is a good movie. It's not a great representation of World War One. Um, yeah, that was a fun episode last week. Uh, folks, we're here to talk about video games. We're here to talk about all things uh, video games. Video games. There, <laughs> dang it! I couldn't, I couldn't pull that one out. Uh, before we get to the news, though, we got to be talking. We got to be talking about uh, the oh, stuff. God, no. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, no, 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 that was last week. You got to rate it. Is that coming we out a little have, bit? We um, can't have two crazy ones two weeks in a row. <laughs> oh, we got to talk about what we've been playing. Uh, and to kick us off, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna go with Kyle because I really don't care about what Ian's been playing. <laughs> <laughs> wow okay um well i will just start with the first one on my list which is uh flight simulator uh, i have not touched it since i think we played it way back during release um yeah. the only reason i'm touching it is because there's a free update for top gun maverick content which yeah. is actually really really cool and i was also interested to see just how much better it ran being as they've had like a year and some change to to get the kinks out and it runs really well on my computer as opposed to where it did not run very well at all and took like 20 days to load anything uh when it originally started so pleasantly surprised uh i flew to mach 10 which was fun uh nice. and just just played around in uh in in the world and and it's it's great i love that game i just it needed time to sort of get the bugs out so i'm very happy that they've managed to do that for the most part and again my pc is not like high powered i have i have like a six-year-old cpu um i have a 2070 super which is which is pretty nice but like my cpu can drag down a lot of games that would normally perform better and it i was getting like 50 60 fps so i was very happy yeah i'm i'm, I'm glad you brought this up because i i played it a little bit recently as well um, I like the the Maverick content because you've got the F eighteen, yeah. You've got that weird Blackbird Mach ten experimental and the uh, the carrier landings. Mm -hmm. um, I have I have a very weird problem with this game though, which is so weird that I can't play the game, but it also just I don't feel like fixing it because I don't know how. But so this happened a couple months ago. I uninstalled the game. I installed it recently, and it's still happening. I think the only way to describe it is that planes don't behave properly <laughs> in the game for me. So, for example, the the Blackbird, I think I think it's is it called the Blackbird? It's, it's called the Dark Star. Dark Star. C almost completely wrong. Dark Star. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> it, it looks similar. like a Blackbird, but yeah. Yeah. Um, so I I've tried taking off in it. And as soon as you get to 40 knots, the landing gear clips into the ground. And then all other planes, once I get them into the air, they just they just jitter uncontrollably. <laughs> and they're like, it's like I'm constantly doing the yaw. And I've messed with controls and everything. And I actually was watching my nephew play it at his house on his computer. And he, his planes were behaving normally. And I was like, this is clearly a me issue. Like with something with my setup, even though I uninstalled the game and reinstalled it after a couple wow. months. So as much as I would like to play that game, just something wonky going on <laughs> with my particular installs of it. And it's hilarious. And that's that's that is not like a quick reinstall that's like 130 gigs um yeah I'd, exactly. i had to just let it go overnight and um yeah that's so weird because it was it's it was weird. pretty pretty rock solid for me and it was it, you know 
I didn't have anything like that when we first installed it. It was just extremely laggy. The load times took a really long time and then we would constantly yeah. get like disconnected. I didn't have any problems like that, but that's that sounds like a And, a and I didn't have thing. that problem when it first came out. It's only like in the last couple months that I've tried it that it's had that issue. But yeah. but the other honestly the most infuriating thing is that if you try and Google like, hey, uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator, my planes are hard to control. <laughs> Literally 99% of it is get good, yeah. turn on all the assists. You know, you shouldn't be touching the rudder when you're in the air after <laughs> a certain, you know, you're just bad at flying. I'm like, no, fuck you, buddy. I've been playing flight sims since I was like four years old, okay? I know how to roughly control a plane good enough for a flight sim game. Something is broken here and you just can't find a, a, a good answer to it. So <laughs> it's just a weird little thing. It's, the only thing I could think of is if you have like multiple types of control plugged in at the same time and it's like all trying to like control yeah. the plane at one time. I, I don't know. I don't think I do, but I will say I will say one of one of my main complaints with this game is the UI and their control UI like rebinding stuff is an absolute nightmare, which yeah. which is part of the reason why I don't do more than the bare minimum to try and fix this because I have to mess around with their UI, yeah. which is not great. It's slow and very clunky and saturated and it's just not good do you use um keyboard or do you have like a hodas hotas setup? I, I have a joystick i have a joystick but it happens as well with the gamepad and with the mouse it's just it's one of those things where like i'm sure i could spend a lot of time to fix it i just don't I it's just not don't. i wonder it's if it's like it. i wonder if it's like cloud saving an i and i file that is like good. changed but I, yeah, yeah i don't know i wonder be. if the there's a way of like clearing that the fact that it's like that you said the the landing gear is clipping at, yeah. at speed that's just that seems like a desync kind of issue or something it's yeah and then, but but in the air it just feels like you're undergoing extreme turbulence like the plane won't fly straight <laughs> it's, it's constantly like like doing this it's super <laughs> wonky yeah so anyway, basically I just it's wanted a, to it's bring a, that up it's a spirit airline simulator um, yeah, nothing <laughs> really almost nothing against the game out of that. Just a weird little story I wanted to share. <laughs> That's funny, though. Um, I guess moving on, uh, Hitman 2. I still have yet to play Hitman 1 or Hitman 3, so I got to I got to get those. I've heard great things about both, and I, I sort of want to round out my playthrough. But it had been a while since I played that series and that specific game. I just remember having a really fun time with it and I played through all the other all the missions available and uh I love it. It's great. I need to go get the other two and, and play them. You, yeah. You have both played that that series? Yeah, I think we both played all three, right? Does two start in New Zealand? So two two starts, you're on like the beach house yes. sort of thing. New Zealand. And then I think you okay, is that I wasn't sure if that was New Zealand. Yeah, yeah, not. sorry. I, I only um, know that because I remember I played that mission like I think of 100% of that map and I think yeah. that it's the only map I've done that with and that's the only reason I remember that. It's such a small map I guess it's not that difficult to to do it or I guess it is still And their it, but... their Halloween event for Hitman 2 was on that map. And it, oh, okay. I think it had just come out, I don't know. Anyways, that's the you only know, it's, reason I it's know. funny it's funny you bring up Hitman because uh if the show Killing Eve has a lot of like very hitman <laughs> elements because the show is about a female assassin or several oh, okay. female assassins, and there's a lot of moments where they're just like hitmaning their way through a level, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and it's fantastic. It's really good. I I Jake talked about that show and really enjoying it, and then he said the ending was like terrible. So I'm kind of is it did it pull like a Game of Thrones kind of. I, well, I, I don't know, because the thing about Game of Thrones was that it was always on the edge of like, uh, this is OK, but it's going to pay off eventually. Right. Whereas Killing Eve was just like fantastic. And then the yeah. last season was OK. So okay. it was it was definitely a letdown in quality, but overall still still fantastic. Plus, it's only it's only four seasons, eight episodes each. So like Maggie and I blasted through it in like two, three weeks. Like sure. it's it's very easy binge. Um, but just going back to the reason I asked you both played the series. Do you guys have a favorite or is it all sort of just one? kind of like experience i feel like it's like favorite maps okay or favorite yeah. levels because so, because the three games are really so similar that i'm honestly struggling to think of like major yeah. like mechanical differences like between them it's really just about the ma map design okay yeah like three is the best game because it has all of one and two in i mean you have to buy it separately but it's a refinement of all of those okay. um 
Oh man, I mean Paris is so good. Is that um, in three well, that's or one? one. That's Paris, one. That's the very first it's mission. First so one and one. Okay. I Hitman people. I, people felt indifferent about Hitman 1 releasing episodically. Mm. Um, I still think it was the best, one of the best decisions Absolutely. a video game ever made uh, because Hitman is all about repetition and playing things over and over again. And when 2 and 3 were served up to me, I played through 2 and 3 once, maybe went back to a couple maps. But when I played through 1, I spent... In, in, uh, an incredible amount of time on each one of those maps because you would spend so much time on Paris and then the second map came out. Uh, and, what was the second map? Was it the it, Italian Village one? Sapienza? I think it may have been, yeah. But that, that so, was kind of, that was all you, you just, had at the yeah, time. Yeah, and then you just spend yeah. so much time on Sapienza and then you'd be like, oh, I'll no. go back and play a little bit more Paris. Oh, I'm done. I'll wait for the third. And then by the time the third, so that is the one thing I thought it's such a hard decision and I know why they decided to go away from the episodic thing because they had proven they could just sell the game and make it all at once. But it was so nice getting that drip feed content that um, I'm kind of excited for the Hitman threes. They're coming out with a new map in like a month or oh. two. And I'm like, Oh, I'm going to dive right into that yeah. map. So um, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. I mean, I, I only have the second one, but I do find myself playing like, I think there's four maps in total in that one. And like the, uh, the the sort of like suburban neighborhood one I play. Yeah, over that's one of my favorites. Because there's there's so many little stories that you can find, and like yeah. I've probably played it. I probably played that one like ten times, and I know there's still stuff that I'm that I'm missing. Um, and it's it's great. So the fact that there are two other separate games that have even more maps just makes me all the more excited. So definitely gonna get the the other two, and then I'll I'll return with my thoughts at some point in the future. Uh, and then the, the, the last, last thing game, about that oh. I just want to say is when you yeah. eventually get three, all of your stuff from two, you can transfer over. Oh, so it'll nice. Keep all your mastery and everything. Would oh. I would I have to go back and play one so and you, two to have both contents transfer? You have to own them. So you yeah, should okay. just buy three and then the pass for one, I think, is cheaper than buying one. So if you just buy okay. three, you'll have two, and then you can buy one. Yeah, and then okay. three, three is like a three is like a launcher almost yeah. for for one, two, oh. and three, depending on yeah. which ones you have bought. Okay. So you won't have to have one and two installed. It'll install them as DLC Alongside. for three. Okay. Um, awesome. and then but once you transfer that stuff up, you can't go back to two, and then I mean, you wouldn't, but. You just yeah. you couldn't go back to just two, you know. Okay. You'd All play right, two awesome. inside of three. Good, good to know, because I had I had no idea. Um, and last one is a game we've all played, uh, Hell Let Loose. It's been a minute since I played with you guys, but uh, it was good, sort of dipping my toe back into an FPS that was unlike a lot of other FPSs I've played. The the sort of milsim uh, genre, I guess, is really blowing up right now no pun intended and uh it was a lot of fun i mean like whenever i jump on with you guys it's it's crazy it's ridiculous sometimes but it it's always it always seems like when we're winning we're all having a good time and yeah. uh even sometimes even when we're losing we're having a good time yeah so. yeah. yeah definitely a fan i great really game. like hell let loose it's great yeah uh speaking of hell ian uh what have you been playing hi I've been playing two games. I folks, it took me about a year. Yeah, a little more than a year to finally pick up Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, or as Kyle Bossman pointed out right after the name was announced, it sounds way too similar to Ratchet and Clank Ripped a Fart, oh. which I, I cannot hear it otherwise. Wow, it's like they did uh, it on purpose, Ian. It's like all their games are named like that. <laughs> um and uh so i waited a while because i didn't want to pay 70 bucks for it it's a ps5 game and they have their stupid next gen upcharge and i was waiting for it to go on sale and i think the closest it got was around like black friday it went down to like 50 bucks or something like that for a short period of time and then it was kind of weird <laughs> it was almost this like gamble like two three weeks ago I have a slick deals alert for this game and it popped up and it's like somebody was like, hey, there's this one third party reseller on Walmart.com selling the game for forty two dollars and everybody else was selling it for 50 or more and you couldn't price match it because it was a Walmart third party reseller. 
and I looked at it and I was like, am I about to be scammed? <laughs> and I bought it and I wasn't scammed. It was just somebody selling a sealed copy of the game. And it wasn't like a single copy. Like it was a, a reseller. They had multiple copies. They were just selling the copy for like eight, 10 bucks less than everybody else. And I was like, cool. Um, it, it's kind of funny because then like a week later, PlayStation had their sale and it was down to 40. But regardless, <laughs> I still got it. I still got it for less than 70 and less than 50. Um, so I've been playing that game. The game looks fantastic. The graphics are great. It's definitely a good showpiece for the PS5. However, this is the most so solid seven ass game I have ever ever played it is just like it is it is it looks beautiful it controls well it's got some interesting stuff in it but also like all of the enemy encounters are either you are walking into an arena with enemies in it or enemies are coming to you in an arena and the story is just it's like late 90s early 2000 like i'm trying to remember I, the names are so bad like there's like a like a marijuana yeah. dude who's just like i'm a lizard and i love weed but he doesn't say that he's just like far out bro let's go save the galaxy like it's just <laughs> god awful character design from that era that they have not tried to update at all and honestly they have a lot of varieties of weapons but i want to say about half of them i just don't like like one of them you throw it and it turns the enemies into i think it turns them into plants so they just become stationary and slowly take damage and i'm like yeah meh there's only like three or four that i really like they have a cool weapon upgrade system so it's one of those games where it's like if i was really bored i would love this game and i play like five or six hours of it but i think i'm done with it i don't know i just i feel like i'm going crazy because there were so many people going bonkers over this game and it really just feels like a solid, solid, solid seven. I don't know. Will, you played this game. Yeah, I it, it was my first Ratchet and Clank. Um, it was also, like, I'm pretty sure it was a pretty dry release last year. Um, 100%. But, yeah. I, I, yeah, I just really enjoyed it because I hadn't... It's been, like, a very long time since I played a straight platformer like that. Uh, and to play it so, like with such great graphical detail and uh like it was like engaging I'm sorry, I enough. Just, I wouldn't really call it a platformer. It's more like a like an action shooter, like an adventure shooter. Yeah, I guess, but you're platforming the entire time. Not really. I mean, you're jumping on things and riding things and puzzling yeah, your yeah, way but around it's all, things. Yeah, but it's all it's all like but it's not like platforming like would be like a no platforming difficulty. Like an arcading a, platform? Yeah, but I, I would guess. still call yeah, it a platform yeah, yeah. in the sense of like like Banjo Kazooie and stuff like that. No, I think that's more. Because I'm just thinking of I am th just thinking of like the main ones are like you hop on this beetle and now you can ride it around like a quick thing, or like you can pull yourself to a rift. But you don't have you don't have a grappling hook. How dare you? Absolutely not. It's only predefined points that you can rift to, but the rest of it is just like running around shooting. So I, 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 I'm not saying there's no platforming in it. I feel like it's just definitely more of a third person shooter. Yeah, than it is a I, I think I just refer to it as platformers because Ratchet and Clank started as platformers and they've always been platformers. And also a lot of those later levels are like clearly you're jumping like plat like there's a lot of platforming yeah. in that game as like as much. There's more platforming than Destiny and Destiny's in my book, a platformer. Um Okay, that's fucked up, but yes, it does have more uh, platforming than Destiny. <laughs> Destiny yeah, does have I, a lot yeah, of platforming. I just, uh, I, I feel like it came out at the perfect time because, like you said, the PS5 was dry. They needed to showcase. All these people just spent four or $500 on this console, and they were like, give me something that shows it off and makes me think I'm playing a good game, and they got it. They got a solid seven. Um, So, honestly, I'm really glad I waited for it and didn't pay more than $42 for it because I would have been disappointed. Yeah, I, I also liked it because I felt like I didn't need to know anything going in. Like, they kind of set it all up for you. Um, I yeah. didn't know any of the characters. And then I thought the story was cool in the sense of them going to a place where the bad guy was successful. And then the bad guy who yeah. wasn't successful is also there. It's like, you can kind of guess what's going to happen, but it's like interesting because they're like, he's interacting with himself and all that. Yeah. It's still fucking up. And so I thought that was fun. Yeah. 
I, I was just, it just kind of brought to my mind, which is that the PS5 so far, I don't want to say it's not a good console, but what do they have that is a PS5 seller? And it's like Returnal, Ratchet and Clank, Horizon, and then just like, I, I don't even want to say the best version, but an upgraded version of exclusives. Yeah, because even the multi platforms you can get off the Xbox. And again, I don't want to be the Xbox fanboy, but like at least with the Xbox doesn't really have many next gen games, but it's got fucking Game Pass, folks. <laughs> and it has like much easier and built in and completely hands free upgrade to next gen versions on games going all the way back to like 360 and Xbox original era versus the PS4, PS5 system where I had to pay 10 bucks on, I had to pay 10 bucks extra just to play the PS5 version of Gran Turismo 7. And then I had to carefully download the PS5 version and not the PS4 version. And it's just like bad. So it's one of those weird things where it's like, we are a year and a half into this console cycle. Yeah. And it's understandably slow. It feels like slower than normal for both of them. And it feels like Xbox is okay with that because they have such fantastic in Game Pass and PS5 is just kind of floundering. I don't know. Am I off base with that? What do you, what are you guys' thoughts? Yeah, as far as sales, um, I, I feel like, I mean, obviously the PS5 still outsells, but also they can't yeah, yeah, yeah. they can't get their chips in and Microsoft's kind of starting to make up that. But deficit, I just mean... But, like we are literally a year and a half into PS5 and Xbox Series X, and let's focus on the PS5 just for this because we've been talking about Ratchet and Clank. Is the PS5 a good console to own a year and a half in? Like, how is it going so far? And I feel like it's just, I feel like it is the only leg it has to stand on is that the PS4 and PS4 Pro are way too long in the tooth now. Yeah. So you're basically playing the exact same games, the exact same multi platforms, but at a higher res. But as a console on its own. It's not really standing that strong right now. Yeah, I was going to say, like, I think people are just buying it now because it's still hard to get. And people want that in their brain win. But as soon as it shows up from FedEx and they unbox it and they turn it on, they say, well, what, what am I going to play? Yeah, they're done with Astro's Playroom. Maybe Horizon. Maybe Ratchet and Clank. And then it just sits there. Like, I think mine was off for like seven months because I just had no reason. Yeah, I haven't turned mine on in a while. Yeah. Anyways, let me talk about a game that's better than Ratchet and Clank. Uh, it's called Hard Space Ship Breaker. So let me describe this game real quick. Uh, it came out in early access a while ago. I think more than a year ago. We actually tried to stream it, and it's one of the few games that we had to we had to cut. I don't. I can't remember. If, I think we just cut the stream short rather than switch to a different game because it was running so poorly while streaming. While streaming. Yeah. But honestly, even off stream, I had to I had to run it at low res. Um, but basically, this game is it is a first person game, nonviolent, in which you are basically doing uh, the job of a space scrapper. So you are picking ships. You have two tools. One of them is kind of a laser cutter, which can either, you know, melt a single item or it can cut like a horizontal or vertical line. And the other one is a grapple, which lets you pick up objects and kind of push them away from you as well as like tether them. Like, you know, say, hey, I want this object to be tethered to this object. So when I pull it, it pulls both of them. And your task is basically to rip apart these ships uh, and scrap them. And you have like a furnace, you have a processor, you have a barge. And uh, every item you look at, it'll be like computer terminal, barge. And then you're like, boop, that goes in the barge. It'll be like bulkhead, furnace, you know, nanocarbon panel, processor. So you're literally just ripping these ships apart. And um, it has like a really nice, like, like retro sci-fi tinge to it. Has a lot of character and flavor to it. And I can't stop playing this game, just ripping these ships apart is so satisfying will you've been playing this game i'm curious to hear your thoughts on it uh yeah so i've um this is no uh sort of uh uh discredit to the game uh i played through the tutorial and i hated it and it was awful <laughs> and i haven't gone back to the game but uh i'll probably go back because it seemed <laughs> to be getting better but i just kind of thought it was dog crap um but what didn't you like about it? Because, just, because look, I, I'll, I'm not to jump ahead, but 
my, one of my 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 weird relationship with this game is that there are plenty of flaws that constantly bother me, and yet I still can't stop playing the game. I just thought it controlled so poorly. Um, like they are were you, trying to teach me like the are you whip doing, are grappling you, thing. Are you, are you do are you playing on a controller, you piece of shit? No, why would I play a PC game on a controller? Because you're like that sometimes. I I when have I ever done that ever? So you so you are playing with mouse and keyboard then? Yeah. I just feel like it's like there's the objects floating and they're like, "Hey, use the grapple to whip it into the thing." And you grab it with the grapple and it like you can't like really whip it or you just like hit the thing to slowly push it. And then it takes like 50 years for it to slowly float into the forge thing. It's just... No, I'm sorry, but this is such a bullshit complaint because it's called physics. Like, if it's too heavy, <laughs> then you're going to slowly move no, it. No, they're like the little know? scraps. So they have use... you cut it up. And then it's like, hey, here's how to cut it up in the tutorial. And then I'm like, now whip it in. And then I tried to whip it in. It just... I thought well, it was I mean, terrible. part of it is also like, like, it's not really about like whipping it and letting it go. I just grab it move it and then i like charge up the push yeah. and throw it i feel like so. that push just wasn't working anyways i'm not I, again it's not a discredited game i think it was my headspace i wanted to play it a little bit before the uh the episode you were gonna be on but then you weren't on it so didn't really matter <clears throat> um but yeah i'm gonna give it a second chance because i think it really would be a game that i would enjoy i just i like i don't know it just wasn't clicking with me that day so that's why I'm not like blaming it on the game. I'm just saying it has not clicked with no, me. No, it's clear you're blaming it. It looks like a game. good game. I, it's very the, obvious. The, the game does have some flaws, which is um so by default, oxygen and fuel drain, and it's all about shifts, as in like, hey, you're breaking down this you start every every sh- you start, you wake up, you leave your habitat, and then they're like, you have 15 minutes on your shift. And then you scrap as much as you can in 15 minutes. And then the timer runs out and it's like, end of the day, go back to your bed. And then you go back to your bed and you wake up and you keep working on the on the, uh, on the the same ship. And then your oxygen is slowly draining down. So every now and then you have to stop, go over to a terminal and buy oxygen or buy fuel. Um, those mechanics suck. Uh, honestly, I played the game as soon as it came out in early access. And literally the first update they did was they were like, hey, uh, we added some toggles. So if you want to turn off the oxygen drain <laughs> and turn off the shift so that you don't have like a 15 minute timer that makes you reset. Like, so I had both of those options toggled. So basically I don't drain oxygen. And um, like I scrapped the ship this morning. It took me like 63 minutes and it was just a nice, relaxing 63 minutes. I didn't have to stop every 15 minutes, go into my habitat, come back out. So, so like, uh, the biggest problem I have with the game is that they have all these weird little, like, timers or incremental upgrades that are just completely pointless. Um, like, for example, the oxygen drain. Like, it's literally just there to be a nuisance so every five ten minutes you have to stop and go purchase an oxygen canister um all your items your thrusters your grapple your cutter your suit they have durability so as you're using the item it starts ticking down on durability um and and an example is with the cutter you have like a, a thermal threshold so as you're continuously firing the cutter it gets all the way up and if you go too far you you like accidentally set yourself on fire so you're like fire 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 okay let it redrain okay fire 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 and um as the as the as you use the cutter it the durability goes down and so more of the bar gets eaten up by like null space so you have less time to hold it down and when it when it goes down the durability and you need to repair you purchase a repair kit to repair it and it's just like why is that in the game it's there's there's just no point to it it feels like they have an upgrade tree and it feels like some of the things make sense like hey how many how many tethers how many remote detonation charges can you hold at a time 5 10 15 what's their radius it's like okay cool cool upgrades you know make me scrap ships to get tech points to upgrade these things but then the other ones are just like hey we added this super fucking annoying mechanic that is in here just so that you can spend upgrade points to make it slightly less annoying it's it's like uh let me follow through with this analogy. It's like the weapon breakdown in uh, Breath of the Wild, 
but instead of the weapon breaks down, which encourages you to try a different weapon type, it's just one type. So it just <laughs> goes down and then you repair it and it's the same fucking one. And so it's just like, like it has these little things in it that are literally just in there to be like, hey, let's add a little bit of mechanic or mechanical or gameplay depth by adding in this timer that you then have to manage. It almost feels like a mobile game where you're like, I want to open this loot box. And like, no, sorry, you can only open one loot box every five fucking minutes. And it's just like... It's just really shitty mechanics like that. And I think my other big problem with the game is that the ships, there's a lot of different ship types and the way that they're built. And there's a little bit of procedural generation where like even the same ship type will be slightly different. But it's like a puzzle game where 50% of every puzzle is the same because there's only one type of airlock in the game. And you always take apart an airlock the exact same way. It's got four support pillars and then two lock pillars for the for the airlock. Once you take those out, then you can separate the outer shell from the inner shell and grab the airlock and throw it down. And it's just like literally every single fucking airlock in the game is like that. So you imagine it doesn't matter what type of ship type you pick or what size it is or what the procedural generation does, it's going to have an airlock in it. And that airlock is going to be designed like that. And there's so many different things like that where every ship feels a little bit too familiar. So part of it is like, cool, I'm getting used to this, so I'm getting better at it. But the more you play, the more you realize I'm like, I'm picking these ships. They don't really feel new or interesting or unique. Yeah. But folks, again, I I, I can't stop playing this fucking game, guys. I played it in early access. I started playing it again two weeks ago, and I didn't realize that when they launched like last week, that it wiped the save. So I'm now on my third save. Wow. I probably have like 25, 30 hours into this game. It's like the perfect podcast game. And I didn't even talk about the best part, which is that this game has actually a really fucking good story. Like literally the game is just wake up, break ships apart, go to sleep, wake up, break ships apart. But it has a story. And the whole story is that there are other scrappers in your team. You never see them, but they're on the radio breaking down their own ships. And there's like your boss, your manager, but he's this cool older guy. And you're all getting along, right? And then they're like, hey, this this corporation kind of treats us like shit. Like basically to work for them, we're now $150 million in debt. And the only way to get out of that debt is to work it off. And every time we die, they just bring us back as a clone and add it to our bill and make us keep working. And so then they're like, hey, psst, kid, what do you think about forming a union? And then they bring in like another oh, manager who's this big asshole. And he's just like a union buster. And he's just like, you don't need training. Like, like he's like, he's like, we got to make quota. So I'm going to give you access to class two nuclear reactors. <laughs> and, and your manager's like, uh, hold on, how we haven't done training for that. And he goes, there's no training time in the budget. <laughs> couple of deaths will teach him and he's like go get the reactor and you're just like okay and you're like trying to dismantle these reactors and i've blown up a couple ships because i mess up a step and the reactor blows or i accidentally like cut through a panel and there's a fuel pipe on the other side and it just fucking blows it and i get <laughs> or like this morning there was uh, again to the physics the physics feel fantastic i was floating there and there was this big piece and i was tethering it and i was like go 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 so finally you have this push charge and I charged it all the way up and I let it off. And instead of the piece moving, it slammed me back against the wall and my and my visor split. And it was like oxygen low, oxygen. I was like, <laughs> and I'm like trying to go get the trying to go get an O2 canister real quick. And I like couldn't make it to like the supply terminal. I was just like <laughs> This game is fantastic, folks. It's going on the fucking game of the year list. Oh. You're gonna be playing more of it. This game, it's on Game Pass for PC. It's really, really good. I, I think I think the fact that it has flaws just makes it that much better, not because of the flaws. But even with all those things that are pissing me off, I can't stop playing this game. It's fantastic. Y'all got to play it. Well, you can thank Doc Burford because he worked on this game, uh, game director for Adios, which we covered or I covered. I actually interviewed about him, uh, interviewed him about Adios, and then he talked a little bit about Hard Space. So if you want to get him on the podcast i'm sure he would he would that's a great idea we can tell him how to fix his game yeah um, um to his face to his, <laughs> to his face, face. No. ian i was just gonna say i i want to say three things here number one the intro uh to you starting the game is fantastic with the little girl reciting yes. poetry about about the shipbreaker tears in my eyes it's incredible. It was so good 
Um, it's like corporate poetry. It's, it's so good. So good. Uh, number two, I was thinking that oxygen mechanic sounds like something they added in because they're like, hey, what's something like funny that you have to pay for over and over again? Like yes. oxygen, blah, blah, blah. So I was almost thinking a good way of implementing that rather than making you go back is you have a oxygen tank and just every time you hit a new threshold, it unlocks more of the oxygen tank but charges yes. you to unlock the capacity of the oxygen tank. Or, and then I'm, you don't have to deal with the refueling, but it's still funny. I'm sorry, you kept, you kept doing this gesture, and I thought you were going to say every time you need to recharge your oxygen, you have to, like, put a quarter in your... You have to stop, oh, put a quarter in well, yourself, and it, like, recharges my itself. first My first thought was every time your oxygen got low, you it just... Instead of having to go somewhere, you just had to hit a key on the keyboard to essentially yeah. refill it. And then I thought that might get too annoying, so you just have to... It just charges yeah. you to use more oxygen. Uh, so and my it's, third it's thing... Definitely, um, j just real quick, on, on the writing, the, the funny thing is you mentioned like they do it as a funny thing and literally everything in this game is so funny because it's just like all this money like your like your score is like negative 150 billion dollars and like every time you scrap a ship you get money and the total goes down a little bit and then they're like oh you need oxygen it's two hundred thousand dollars you know like they're just overcharging you everywhere and it's kind of funny because the whole game is quote unquote built around money but none of it matters because you're in debt the whole time <laughs> yeah. and they don't prevent you from being further in debt which is a really funny idea i'm sorry i didn't mean to interrupt no, no, no worries. Uh, my third thing is, Ian, when do you think we stream this game? I'm going to say, um, I'm going to say two years ago. Wow. Early almost July 14th, 2020 is when we stream this game. Yeah. We streamed it for, uh, what seems to be 20 minutes before we switched yeah. to play another hour and five <laughs> minutes of okay, snow <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the one. Yeah, it's it's still it's definitely performing better now, but it's definitely one of those games where I was like, I have a 3080, I have a nice i7, and I was like, I could probably play this at 4K, and I was like, nope, got to play it at 1440 medium because it's a little <laughs> bit not well optimized, but at least it's still running. So uh, I hope you all are ready to play that game because no kidding, it's going on the list. It's it's really really good. I, I just want to say we played it two years ago. That was right after it came out into early access it officially came out last week or, or two weeks ago and one of my other gripes with the game this is very particular for me is that the game i played when it came out in early access i enjoyed it but i stopped playing because i was like there's not quite enough content here they've that was like 80 percent of the final game they really have not spent those two years wisely adding a lot more to it which is kind of frustrating i the final product is still very very good yeah it's just one of those instances in which it didn't feel like they really added a lot like there's like like they added a couple more ship types and a couple more proc gen and they added a bulk of the story but like 80 percent of it was there and i just really wish they had a lot more variety in the game totally it was um, fantastic play yeah i i gotta play more of it now that you're raving about it so much i'll i'll play a little more uh, what I played this week, Sniper Elite 5 came out last, uh, Thursday. Uh, Excuse me. Um, I've really been enjoying it. It's fun to shoot Nazis. It's fun to see their brains explode. It's fun to see their testicles explode. It's fun to see their hearts and lungs explode. Um, my only issue with this game is it so desperately wants to be Hitman but in no way is good like Hitman. Oh. Um, and I think if they just went... like It's like someone stood there and said, no, nah, we can't do that. Hitman does that. No, nah, we can't do that. Hitman does that. And if they, if that man was just shot uh, and, and they said, the yeah, best. let's do it because Hitman is great, yeah. this game could be awesome. Like, I'm just... I desperately want to put another man's skin on and be like... <laughs> like a german officer or something to like walk up pla past places like so much of it is yeah. tagging a bunch of enemies which is kind of fun sniping them from really far away which is super fun but by the time you have to go to your objectives yes. you the hitman vision they have you have to hold you have to click and hold right stick for it to turn on and then you have hitman vision and then to turn off you then have to click and hold the stick again to turn it off. 
But if you click it, you bring up your binoculars. So you're like holding, that's click and hold uh, to turn it on. You're not holding it to keep it on. It's just click and hold to turn it on. And you're walking around like listening. And then there's a guy coming up. So you quickly tap it to get out of it but that doesn't get you out of it that just pulls up your super zoomed in binoculars onto the enemy (laughs) so it's it's so much of like people always see you the other problem with sniper elite is your gunshots they they help you out with this but your gunshots can be heard obviously so like they have planes that fly over to mask it but they're just too far in in between like i just want to go i want to get going and it's just like they're trying to make it more fast paced but it's not quite there and the the sort of AI life that people live is not to the level of Hitman, and people are just patrolling. Like, there's a bunch of trucks and stuff, and I'm like, oh, let me, let me, I mean, this could change, but I went and sabotaged it and put a grenade in the truck. And I was like, yeah, so the guy in, like, five minutes who's on his route will come and get the supply truck and turn it on, and it'll explode. But it never happens, because I don't think anyone's ever going to go to that truck and drive it somewhere. Like, maybe I killed them. Uh, at mm-hmm. some point, but it just feels like that's not going to happen. Um, the maps are just weirdly sort of designed um, for like places that these Germans are just like hanging out in. They're not like the front line where they're they're defending it or something like that. They're just hanging out, and there's like weird defense sort of setup for that. And it's just it, it's fun. It's it's on Game Pass, so that's why I'm playing it. Um, I actually I probably would have bought it because I really liked four. Um, but I think uh, I don't really th- don't think I would recommend this game to anyone for like twenty bucks. Yeah. Um, mm. I don't know if I'm gonna finish it. I'm having fun with it. Um, but yeah, Sniper Elite Five, not getting my wholehearted recommendation this time. Yeah, I played four and I probably have about like fifteen hours in that game, and. I had to stop after like the second mission because it was just taking me way too long. Like it's so they give you such a large swath of land to cover. Um, And I, I just, I'm pretty methodical when it comes to that sort of stuff. I like planning out my route and, and tagging people. Like you, you talked about that, how it's kind of fun. And I just remember being like, it's too, this is too large of of an area to cover for me because it became so repetitive so fast and i loved i loved like the the unique style that they put on it but yeah it definitely i I like your analogy of it it does sort of feel like it's trying to be hitman but not but do things like that like hitman has perfected so many things and it's like well since we can't do that we have to do the lesser version of this which isn't as fun but yeah. at least we're doing our own thing. And it just feels like a bad compromise that they should have just been like, nope, we're just, who cares if we're copying them? Like, let's just go with what's fun, what makes sense and what's more engaging. So I, I kind yeah. of agree with you there, even though I haven't played the the new one. The, um, the other thing is like, I spent an hour or two on a map, like working my way to get to like this location at this top of the Chateau castle thing, everything. And then like I died and I reloaded and then I spent five minutes just i just ran past everyone who all got alerted i just ran all the way up there killed the guy and finished the mission like and at the end thing it's like you went lethal and loud i'm like i don't (laughs) care um i will say there's one thing this game does very 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 well and it's new for this game you can be invaded by other players and i I had to turn it off because it gave me too much anxiety but it is so good i was on a mission it said enemy sniper jaeger infiltrated and so i i see that and there's these little phones all over the map so you go up to the phone you oh it's great i love those phones you like wind them up and then you pick up the thing they're like yeah this is where the jaeger is and it shows you off uh jaeger was here two seconds ago and it just starts counting as the time goes so you know where he is so i saw where he was i ran to this bunker i put a bunch of teller mines down and i was like oh i'm just gonna camp this bitch uh and so i'm sitting there i must have been there maybe two three minutes and then to my surprise on the screen it says camping alert leave the area and i was like that's pretty good like i like it wasn't making me go that far but it was just like hey don't be a little shit like play 
And I, I, was like, I don't know. Okay, I feel like any other game that's good, but this is a sniper game. Yeah, I kind of that's like right, that's like the whole thing. I was I was inside a room in a bunker, like no windows. Like I was just waiting oh, okay, for him okay. to come to me. So I don't know if it would have done that if I was in a sniper's nest or something. Um. So, anyways, I ran out, ran into. Uh, I called the phone again, saw where he was. I ran, got into a field, and I'm just like scanning, scanning, and then I just see this German running out of a field running across the thing right in front of me and i just took out my machine gun machine gunned <laughs> him down and it just said not nazi jaeger or sniper jaeger killed and i like huge sigh of relief um nice. and then on another map i got invaded the guy left and then two seconds later invaded by another guy and i did a sniper battle with him he won and then after that i turned it off because i was like I, I was playing the game like in spurts i was like i can't Every time I play, I can't have someone invade me. Like, it's too much. Yeah. But it was yeah. a really cool system, and I really enjoyed it. Um, That's cool. I had no idea how, that they'd have it then. Remember how bad Deathloop was? It just reminds me of that. I just... I never played <laughs> I it. I just... I saw, I saw Donkey's review, and they just... He kept kicking people. And it I was, was like, this, this seems more effective than using the guns they give you. So. It was... That's another game that should have been more Hitman. It could have done yeah. it. And it wasn't. Um, and the other game I've been playing, fresh off the mobile phone, folks, Diablo Immortal. Uh, I've been playing this on my phone. Gentlemen, this phone, lo- this phone, this game looks really good on the phone. It plays really yes. well on the phone. Uh, yeah. I've been having a pretty good time with it. Uh, it's also on PC in beta. I've installed that cross progression and everything. I have not tried it on PC yet. Uh, I meant to before the stream, but I did not get a chance to. Uh, on phone, uh, it's fun. It, it has so many settings. It's like a PC game. It's really wild. <laughs> really? Um, I turned on 60 FPS mode, which tells you it will hurt your battery and make your phone hot. And I said, I really don't care about that. Uh, and then you can like turn on like anti-aliasing. You can go to like 4k if you have a, a, a higher up res phone. Um, you can, um, all sorts of graphical settings for like texture detail, all that sort of stuff. I was like, that's pretty wild. Um, but playing it, it felt really good. Uh, it's It's got like, I played through the whole tutorial and at the end they kind of put you into the world with all the other people. Um, so I haven't played much with like other people being around. Uh, I'm playing a monk because uh, that's why I played in Diablo 3 for a while. Uh, yeah, it's 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 iffy. I, I, I personally don't like playing games on my phone. Um, like I feel like my hands fall asleep really quickly, but or like my hands are huge on my phone, so that's kind of okay. The joystick's nice because you don't really have to be right on it to like control your character. the The skills and stuff are more laid out properly. Um, it's nice because you can go up to an item and they have like a quick button for picking up that's close to your thumb. Uh, same for like talking to yeah. people and going through portals and stuff. Um, I have no idea where this takes place. Like, Deckard Kane is in it. I don't know what the timeline for this game is compared to 3. I don't even remember the story in 3 all that well. Who cares about um, Diablo's story? <laughs> yeah, that too. Um, but yeah, I've been enjoying it. It's fun. Um, I'll probably play it some more. I don't know how much more I'll play it on my phone, but it was kind of... It felt cool, like, playing it on my phone in bed, uh like late at night and i was like oh, i could get used to this so i'll try it on pc see how that works i do like that there's cross progression uh and all that sort of stuff um and it linked right I, up um, to my blizzard account and everything yeah i i also played a little bit of this game probably about 30 40 minutes of it and i i think i pretty much agree with you where like it's really cool they they really have built what feels like a fully featured game for your mobile and it's it's a diablo game it's it's slightly more zoomed in but yeah, it still feels it's it's basically a Diablo game. They've done a lot of like UI and control stuff to make it feel really good and intuitive. I just I think it's bad because it's it's a Diablo game on your phone, but it's not a phone game, if that makes any sense. Like you are controlling the character, you're casting spells, you're looking in certain directions, you're running around a map. They even have like the the mini map on the top right and all that stuff and you're picking stuff up. Like it is it is a great port of a Diablo game to your phone. Yeah. It's just it's not a phone game. You know, like like I was playing today and like I played for a couple minutes and then I was like, "Oh shoot, I got to do something." And I like put the phone down 
and I did something. I came back to it 10 minutes later and it was like, oh, you were inactive. We kicked you from this session. You're back at the main menu and you have to like hop back in. And it's just like, do you understand what a fucking phone game is? It's where you yeah. pick it up and play for 30 seconds or 30 minutes and it drops and you pick it right back up. And it's just like. I was thinking like it should have been like, I don't know, like an incremental game, like an idler game. It should have been simpler, maybe yeah. like clash game where it's like three minute sessions or whatever. And so it's like, great. You made a Diablo f- game on the phone. I'm sure plenty of people are going to enjoy that, but it's not a phone enough game for me. You know? Yeah. The big thing was like, you can't just like swipe it away like you could with any other game. Um, yeah. It's just like, yeah, definitely. It doesn't, it's a game that's on the phone, but it, it, there's no reason for it to be on the phone. Which I think is yeah. why they like conceded and made a PC port of it, um, but yeah, it's just it's it's weird that it's on the phone. You like download the game and then spend like an hour downloading all of the other stuff outside of the game. <laughs> um, it's and you have to, like I think it's like eight to ten gigabytes. Like, yeah, and I had lot. to leave my phone open and on to download all that stuff. It would not download yeah. in the background. And I was like, what is going on here? Oh, I think that's because of Apple. Android will do that. I think that's an Apple restriction. Oh, I was so pissed. Um, so, yeah, you hit the nail on the head. It's a, it's a good game. It's a good port of a game. But there's, it's what, like, what, I mean, we know why it's on mobile phones, but why is yeah. it on mobile phones? Like, um, yeah, it's, it's like Call, Call of Duty Mobile is supposed to be really good, and I'm sure it is. But it's, it's for a completely different segment that is hardcore mobile gaming but they want those normal video games to play on their phone and it's like sure have fun with that i'm sure those are great games but for me phone games are a completely different type of game that i go to i can't just i don't want to play a normal video game on my phone it's got to be something different right um uh, okay uh that is the games we have been playing which means it's time to look at the news. why are you highlighting everything um, I'm gonna play the news theme, the and then we're gonna play. We're gonna play the news. Here's the news. We're talking about news. It's gaming news. What's up, news? Will, where's the new song? I don't have he wrote it, it, Ian, and played it for us. Where's the new song? I. He wouldn't re-record it. Halucha. That's a lie. Shout out. Uh, make Zach re-record it, please. Thank you. Clip this. Yeah. I love I'm you. I'm disappointed. Just so disappointed. Shut up, you whores. Um, <laughs> sorry. Now, I, know, I know we've got... <laughs> I know we went very long with some great video game discussion. We've got some fluff in here. Do you want me to just... Excuse me. Is this your fluff? show? Excuse me. <clears throat> it is Excuse now. Excuse me, uh, madam. Excuse me? <laughs> sorry. That's, a, that's, a, that's an offense to women. Um... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, since we're a little like, short on time because someone can fucking stop talking uh then uh well, we're gonna the play one that puts we're gonna, a time limit on the show i want to baby will does i'm literally literally going to eat your ass if you don't <laughs> shut up um uh, whole thing we're gonna play a little game and did not watch <laughs> the playstation state of play today that i That's covered right. for work um forced to watch it by the man um can so i we're give gonna... some quick predictions oh, real quick God, fucking shut up. final fantasy yes. 16 god of war no don't say yes or no final fantasy 16 no i was saying yes to guess shut up final fantasy 16 yes. god of war 2 we probably saw more of that weird um uh death straining kojima knockoff from what is it capcom um and uh definitely saw some more for forewarn forbearance whatever that stupid game is and um knack three that's my wild card knack three. <laughs> okay okay um i'm using this article from one former guest gabe gerwin uh who starts off here saying sony didn't mess around with playstation state of play presentation on june 2nd gabe they did not mess around uh ian you yeah. ready yeah Kyle, you watched it, I'm assuming, right? Bring me the PS5 games. I have this stupid, beautiful paperweight in my living room, and I want to use it. Okay. First announcement. Capcom started off the show. Okay. Resident Evil 4 Remake. Okay, that's good. I'm glad it's finally finally been announced. Heavy rumors. Do they give a date? Uh, March 23rd. March 23rd. 2023. Oh, for some reason you said March 23rd, and I was like, this year? This year? 
Uh, and they also so they announced that, and then they announced that uh, there is also a. Uh, uh, there, they also announced there is a PSVR 2 version of it uh, in development as well. Oh, but that already came out for the Quest. No, so two. the remake version. Oh, remake VR version. Yeah, VR version. Let me ask you a question. I've, n- I've never played it. I'm kind of on the fence if I should wait for the remake or if I should play the original. How did it look? Uh, it looked really good. Uh, they didn't show too, too much of it. It was um, more cinematic than... yeah. Like I play tried play to play Resident Evil 4 after liking the 2 remake, and I couldn't do it. Oh, it's too old. Controls are too wonky. I, I don't know if I could go back to it now, but when I did originally play it, it was super fun. Um, okay. It was yeah. also, for its time, like pretty different, but also kind mm-hmm. of groundbreaking. So I, it it might be fun to just go back and play it, but I don't know if, if you can get into it like Will did not yeah, I've, I've heard some people say, like, there are specific versions you want to play because of the controls yeah. and you are more manageable than others. So I, I, I think I, I may I, end up. Uh, I think I could do it, but I would rather wait now. Yeah, see, I think I think for me, I would rather play the old one. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll do yeah. some anyway. Anyways, um, OK, moving on. Next up, uh, they actually they didn't. Gabe didn't write this in order. Gabe, he did the right thing, which was the most exciting things first. Um, no, they also announced. Well, we they also it? announced just in time for Spooky Pixel Resident Evil Village VR, which I uh, can't wait for you to play. It's going to um, be so scary. <laughs> um, next up, no. I, I, <clears throat> I keep thinking I want to play Village, but then I, 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 I honestly, don't. honestly, Village, I, 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 I don't hear, think I hear I, that. I, I hear it that it's like it's it's like the less scary of all of them. And it's it's not that much jump scare, but I still think it's too much scare for me. It, it's the less scary of all of them, except for when it decides to be the most scary. Oh, the of most all scary of them yeah. for like one chapter. Yeah. But I will say, yeah. like, uh, I'm, we're pretty close on the, how much we get scared by things in in video games, and I would say, I, I would say you could do everything except for House of Benvenido. Um, but other than that, uh, like, unlike Resident Evil Seven, where the back half of that was super easy for me. Um, but I don't know, Maggie, um, scary. the other, like, a couple weeks ago, Maggie was watching some show, and she decided to watch an episode about this old lady that was a serial killer and just, like, killed, like, 20 people and buried her in her backyard, and she watched it in bed right before we went to sleep, and I had nightmares that night because oh. of it. So, Wait, was it, like, a true crime sort of thing? Oh, it was or? true crime. It was oh just an God. old lady. Yeah, she, she was lived running next a boarding door. house. <laughs> people were there, and she would just kill them, bury their bodies in the backyard, and then claim their social security checks. And they, like, started digging, and they found, like, 15 bodies God, in their backyard. I mean, that's a, that's a, that's a un- an entrepreneur right there. I'll tell you that much. Straight entrepreneur up, straight making up manure. Win for capitalism right there. Yeah. It's just like, Good on her. <laughs> um. <laughs> Okay, so the very next thing they announced, which this was, I don't know if it was leaked or they announced it beforehand, was the um, Horizon Call of the Mountain first person PlayStation VR exclusive. Yeah, that uh, title spin-off. came out. I think I think they announced it like this morning. Yeah, looked interesting. Um, Ian, you were complaining about PlayStation exclusives. And yeah. But not PSVR 2 exclusives, which is still a wired fucking headset when the Quest 2 is like 250 and and it's true wireless VR. I'm teeing up the next segment. You were complaining about the lack of PS5 exclusives. (laughs) Sorry, I thought you were like tooting the horn for fucking Horizon VR. Fucking shut the shit up. (laughs) (laughs) If you gave me a good game for once, Spider Man. Ian remastered. Spider-Man remastered Spider-Man Ian remastered Spider-Man a PS5 exclusive now coming to PC Ian more ways to play <laughs> well, is that game is that game four years old yeah the, well, the remastered, remastered one is newer uh, also the but... Miles Morales is coming to PC as well but the remaster one, the remaster is not remaster. It's just the PS5 version of PS4. So it's not really a remaster. No, it it's is just remaster. like, oh, higher res. No, I think they no. redid, they, they redid textures and yeah, there's yeah. ray tracing. Like, and... It's not remade. It's remastered. Yeah. It's barely, it's, it's basically just a port to the next gen. It's, I, I would hesitate to even call it a remaster. It's like what Xbox does with their Xbox one titles on the series X where they're just like, guess what? Free 4k 60 FPS. Boom. Done. 
Um, no, so I would say Spider Man is different than that. I, I hesitate on that. Well, we we don't have enough details hesitating. to argue about it. But the point is that game's like four years old. Why are we like re- double, triple remastering it and then we're not it on triple PC? remastering? So, like, Sony's it's just coming to up, PC. Man. It's already been shit? remastered. It already happened. Shit. Next, uh, this one I'm very excited about. They showed off. All- a long trailer for the Callisto Protocol, the new Dead Space game, uh, or oh, yeah, Dead yeah. Space developer, yeah. uh, Glenn Schofield. No longer connected to the PUBG universe, unfortunately. Um, featured I, a... I, wanna, I, I just want to be on the fly on the wall for that decision because they're a PUBG studio, right? Aren't they under the PUBG brand but they're no longer in the universe? Or am I... No. Or are they just completely separate now? It was originally announced as... Like when it was first announced at E3, they said it's no, related. I, I know what it was program. announced, but but what I'm saying is, aren't they a PUBG studio? Because the PUBG brand has a couple studios now. Maybe you're right. Anyways, Kyle, maybe you could look that up while while Will goes on. Sure. Yeah, make Kyle do it. Uh, next up, uh, this one actually, honestly, I knew what it was right away, and I thought it looked kind of fun. And I might play this game, which is extremely surprising. Gameplay reveal for Street Fighter VI. Um, they Ooh. showed like a little m- mode where the guys like running around a city, sort of Yakuza style, with the hood up, like beating people like a up. Beat them up like a third and person. Stuff like beat that. Up? And then, then it kind of got into the sort of side by side people fighting. Um, I-, I didn't really pay attention because I was doing other things but um it looks kind of interesting it is coming to ps5 and ps4 but Uh, okay fuck that but fighting games i want to love fighting games and play fighting games but they just don't they don't want you to play them no i i agree with you i just that's why that opening mode like really like yeah because it looked more than just like a like sort of uh what was that mortal kombat x that had like the dungeon thing you could run through yeah i can see no, more I'm, I'm with that. that i just know that if they are using the standard fighting controls it's gonna be dog shit it's gonna true. be a true. nightmare to get into so yeah. going going back to striking distance uh the player unknowns battleground wiki says that striking distance is a game development studio owned by PUBG corp uh gotcha yeah. Okay, that makes this just wants to craft an original narrative experience in the PUBG universe outside of the battle royale genre. So that's why it's so weird. They they are they are a PUBG studio and they decide this game is not going to be in the PUBG universe. And it's like, why not? The universe is empty. You could just have like a two line tie to it. You know, yeah. it's just a weird decision. That's all. Um. Next up, we've got Roller Drome. Uh, what is this? This game looks really cool. It looks uh, like Sable. It, yes, it looks... The art style is like Sable. Uh, and I'm so happy you said that, Kyle, because I can literally not remember the name of that game. <laughs> <clears throat> it is roller derby with guns. Uh, yes! You're performing acrobatic tricks on roller skates. Athletes blast each other into smithereens and avoid giant mechs firing back with cannons. Um, it looks really fun. It launches August 16th for both PS4 and PS5 um very excited for uh, that i is this I, i'm just is this in an arena or is this like a linear war? like what what was yeah, it, it looks like they kind of like I... rolled in and dived into an arena and we're like fighting and is it like sp- is it like sport like there's some sort of score going on or is it just combat uh, uh me watching this video now oh, it looks really uh, they're kind of the like that... third person. You're like doing dives and shooting people. I can't tell if they're actually against other people or. Okay. Uh, I think either way, it still could be fun. I'm just trying to figure out: is it more yeah. Rocket League or is it more? It's like more Tony Death Hawk, match, you know. Yeah, it's it's a very Tony it's a Hawk. really interesting. Yeah, I, it's definitely Tony based? Hawk. Yeah. Yeah. There's no. I'm just, I'm just trying to screen. think. Uh, I'm just trying to think: awesome. is it like is it? Is the goal to kill other people, or is there a secondary or score mechanic yeah, that see, you're really trying to do? The thing for? I'm trying That's... to figure out now, I don't know if it's a multiplayer. It seems like you're just going through this place killing people. Um it looks really good. I'm excited for Wait a minute, is this drum. the one is this the one that has that has had tweets of like the guy dicking around in the game engine with it? No, this was just announced. I don't today. think so. Okay. I think you're wrong. Uh 
also they announced, which is not properly included here, the Stray game is coming out uh, ju- in July. The Looks cat good. game, cat. like Futures yeah. the Cat, cat which I'm so excited yeah. for uh, because I've been following that game for like six years Forever. now. And they, like four years ago, they got bought by Sony and went silent. And I thought the game was just like scrapped or something. Uh, and then <laughs> that's when they announced it last year. Um, that's coming out and it's coming uh, free to people on the two higher tiers of uh, yes. that uh, thing. So already, already paying S- dividends. Spin it up. Spin it up. Spin I want you to do up. the same thing Xbox does, which is as many games as possible you shove onto the subscription service. That's the future. I'm a subscriber. Feed it to me. I don't want to pay 70 bucks for some half-ass title. Um, they also announced Tunic is coming to PS4, PS5, and also No Man's Sky, PSVR 2. I know you're excited about that one. Uh, and then finally, Ian, the show ended. With PSVR with... 2. Wow. you just reading my screen now. No, absolutely not. The show ended with Final Fantasy 16, everybody. I looked yeah. up from my computer and saw two giant dragons fighting each other with health bars, and I had no idea what was going on. Um, <laughs> it's launching for the PS5. I, honestly, I went back and watched it, and I yeah. still couldn't figure out what was going on. It's and then lot. I was like, oh, because there's like some humans before. Anyways, uh, PS5 Summer 2023. Uh, got a new trailer that detailed the ramblings of a war echoing through the land of Valisthea at the beginning of the story before quickly moving to a much louder actual war that follows. Uh, there were giant monsters. They seemed to play a big role in the story. Um, I don't like it wasn't clear if you controlled them or something like that. And it suddenly so it's became a, a fighting game. game. Um, gotcha. I don't know, maybe this will be my first Final Fantasy game. I'm a JRPG expert. So. I, I believe this is the head of this game is the guy that brought final fantasy 14 around so oh that game sucks <laughs> it's pretty good actually it's pretty good can i tell you a secret ian so you've been watching next lander and you want to keep playing it honestly i said that this morning and then saw a next lander email and realized Vinny was playing it and that must unconsciously been in my mind uh because then i started watching him play it and i was like oh and then i did the thing where i installed it today and I thought, yeah, I've been thinking about playing it as well, but I just I just have so many other games yeah. to fill my time right now. And I thought the nice thing is I still don't have to pay, so uh, I might hop in and, and play a little bit. I I did the, I don't want to say the mistake, but I I did pay for it, yep. and then I only played like five more hours. Hey, you made a mistake. Like I did the thing where I was like I should have I should have paid for it at the beginning to take advantage of all the friend and free company yeah. stuff, but I bought it right before I burned yeah. out on it. So you it. made a but mistake. I, still worth it. Still worth it. I'm glad I gave them money. Yeah, I might play it again. Um, I yeah. Is that uh, so? They really didn't say anything more about PSVR two other than just saying showing off some games, games coming to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but they didn't they, they didn't show any more about hardware, or any more date or anything like that. No, nope. because they nope. they didn't they say that in the state of play. They said like PS five and PSVR stuff. Like they keep they keep saying PSVR PSVR two, and they keep like giving out news items where's the big i don't want to say reveal because they've already revealed it, but where's the big like showcase for it or even just like a tease with a date there's nothing they're they're slow rolling this i think they got so used to like the shitty ps5 xbox series sx rollout during the non-e3 2020 year that they just consider that standard now like i, I want some fanfare for this i'm not gonna buy it but g- give the hardware some fanfare anyways uh, they also announced uh, season a letter to uh, sorry. What is the name of the season a letter to the future, which I thought looked pretty interesting indie game, and then this other horny anime romance game that I don't I don't know. I uh I mean just based on this description, it's like they've got some good stuff there if you're a fan of some of those series, but if you're not, honestly the the roller drum is yeah. the only one that's kind of grabbing me. You should go watch that trailer. It looks really yeah, it looks cool. Pre- it looks pretty sick. Um. I don't know how, yeah. do you, how you guys feeling about that state of play. Uh, I could have. I think that like, doesn't. I'd say like seventy five percent. Like I'm, I'm seventy five percent on it. It was sort yeah. of average, but nothing really shocked me. Or it's kind of yeah, shitty for being me. a week before E three. Yeah, it's their E three. It's their E three. Um, yeah. Now I, I mean, I'm 
Final Fantasy vaguely, I will probably play it because uh, it'd be cool to jump in when one of those is hyped. Um, but other than that, oh, Stray. Uh, that's the only other thing I'm really excited yeah. for in Roller Drum. Yeah. Uh, and Resident Evil 4, like... but that's a year away, so. Yeah. I feel like Sony is really leaning on those core franchises, Final Fantasy, Resident Evil, God of War, Horizon, etc., that they're just like, we have these franchises, they're ours, people love them, they're, we're building our fan base around that, and so all these all these uh, conferences and pressers, et cetera, they're like, we've got to feed them something from this. If you're a fan of one of those series or multiple of those series, I'm sure you're shitting your pants with glee right now. But if you're not, I don't think they're showing enough new stuff. Roller Drome sounds pretty cool. But like as somebody who's not into those franchises, show me something on the side, show me something extra or show me something to get in, into those franchises. I'm not really. Yeah. Feeling it. And also, what percentage of these games are coming to Xbox, anyways? Uh, like Stray yeah, probably isn't. Good. Roller Drome, I could see. Uh, I mean, Final Fantasy eventually right. will, like the other ones will come. I'm pretty sure 15 launched on Xbox. Kingdom Hearts 3 launched on Xbox. Square Enix is multi-platform now. No, no, I know. No, fifth. I don't think 15 launched. I think it came later. Yeah, you may be right. But Kingdom Hearts 3 launched. Yeah, yeah. On yeah. Xbox. No, I'm just saying. I think like eventually yeah. Final Fantasy will be there, anyways. So, like, I might as well wait for it at a discount on the system I want to play it on uh, yeah. than play it on PS5. Um, yeah, so it was pretty lackluster. It'll be interesting to see all the announcements next week and kind of compare it back to that. Um, but that's a good point. Like, as much as people say, like, oh, Sony doesn't do E3, there's no E3. That was their E3 press conference, 2022. I don't care who you are. That was Sony's E3 press conference. And I feel like the only bangers we already knew about resident evil four remake final fantasy 16 uh, street fighter six so it's like yeah those bangers were from yeah. another company yeah yeah and one like you to said play. most of them are multi-plat yeah yeah um moving on i'm just gonna hit a quick hit here which is um they announced uh or they showed a gameplay trailer for pokemon scarlet and violet this week uh releasing on november 18th with four player co-op uh, which oh, yeah, I'm boys. actually really excited for for uh, Poke Will this uh, fall if we do some episodes of that. I, I mean, it won't be a full Poke Will. Uh, It'll be informal because we've got Poke Will season two yeah. before then. Yes. Um. So that'll be interesting, uh, especially they were saying you can do four player co op and there's no pro uh, story progression tied to the open world, uh, which will be cool. Uh, and then they kind of showed off having other trainers in there that you can battle against and the new battle menus and all that sort of stuff. So I'm kind of excited for yeah. that. Um, I know we talked about it earlier, but they did Arceus so dirty because Arceus was like, hey, we're going to try this open world thing and it's going to be bare bones. It's going to be a little unique, but let's see if you like it. And then like, I'm going to say like a month after it came out, they're like, JK, we took all the stuff from Arceus that worked. We forgot the rest. It's the new mainline <laughs> yeah. Pokemon. Sorry. I hope I can still take pictures with my Pokemon. That was the best part. And, and Will, you had, a, it was either Will or Jake who was, when the, when the trailer came out recently, who was like, oh, this looks a lot better than Arceus. I wonder if it's like new graphics or something. I'm like, I'm pretty sure it's the exact same graphics. The art design is just 10 times better. And like the environment design, it's not flat open planes with two I don't trees, know. Some of those you know? shots were real bad in, in no, the violet they, they are but it just definitely looks a lot better than like the barren yeah. landscapes i just meant Arceus. like i hope they've like optimized it for the switch a little bit better than rcs was like, it was yeah. so bad yeah. um glad i never played it <laughs> i need i need I a switch pro also everyone's yeah, fawning over the new pig pokemon and i think it's ugly i hate it I think it's uh, just what, is, what is it called lechonk Lechonk. Lechonk. Is it, it's, is it's, it, it's a good name. Is the is the evolution gonna be Gigachonk? Lethic. Lethic. Lechonky. Lechonk. Lechonk. Did they? Did they happen to say where this region is? It's in Spain. terms of real world. Spania. Spania. Because I believe that pig is the lo those like Spanish hams. Is that a thing? It's like oh, hams they yeah, leave yeah, out to dry. Yeah, they have all the bugs. So, anyways, um, 
Well, we're gonna call it there, I think, because it is ten fifteen, uh, which means it's Papa's. I just want to. I just we have to talk about this last one real quick. Uh, oh, another yes, this guy is funny. has leaked classified military documents on the same War Thunder forums. This is the third time we've talked about this. The third <laughs> time it's happened. People getting so upset about a tank, uh, like a non-sim tank game, and how their favorite tank is being nerfed. That that somebody in the Chinese military was basically like, "Look, your stats are wrong. This tank is more powerful." here's pictures of the classified manual from the tank and then they oh. also had a picture of like of like parts from the tank on top of the manual <laughs> and they like immediately took it down oh. it's the third time somebody has like classified information on this forum to basically like complain about nerfs or buffs in the game hilarious it just had to talk about it, it has happened again folks every time it happens we'll bring it up i mean it makes sense but just get rid of the modern tanks <laughs> like the classified tanks <laughs> and then uh don't you don't have to worry about it yeah um oh boy okay let's play the music here folks thank you so much for tuning in if you are listening to this uh ian and kyle thank you so much for joining me it's lovely as always to talk to you um folks you can find all of our content subpixelfilms.com that is our website it'll bring you straight to our youtube channel uh, where you can subscribe and follow and do all sorts of things. Uh, we will be back Sunday, 1 p.m. Eastern with uh, Sunday service. Father Ian and Father Will will bring us through another Holy of Holies uh, in his image and in his likeness. And it will be most enlightening and and uh, and uh, perfect for you to be here. Um, until then, uh, you can find us on Twitter at Subpixel Team, and you can find us on Facebook under the same gnome and uh, and on uh, Twitter and uh, Instagram and all that sort of stuff. Uh, Ian, where can people find you on the internet? You can find me on Twitter at Thank Gibson. I think I've just been tweeting weird Facebook for sale posts that I find lately. Yes, so if you want I do some enjoy weird those. shit in the Jacksonville area, hit me up. Uh, Kyle, where can people find you on the internet? Uh, people can find me at Kyle of the Beard on Twitter and Instagram. On Instagram, uh, I just post food that I eat, which I know is real old fashioned, but nice. it's still still nice. going. I like that. Uh, folks, you can find me on Twitter at Hunt270. I uh, retweet funny things, um, and I don't tweet much, except that I am better than you, and no one is better than me. Uh, until then, we'll see y'all. Uh, yeah, we'll see y'all next week. Bye.